Now, in studying microbiology, we deal with six major groups of these microorganisms. And these six groups or major groups include, firstly, viruses, as you can see here. Here are viruses attacking a bacteria and inserting their genome inside of the bacteria. Second group would be fungi. So this is an example or picture of yeast cells. Another group would be algae, as you can see in the picture here. This is, uh, I think, anabena, if I'm not mistaken. Protozoans will also, will also be a group of microorganisms studied under microbiology. Bacteria as well, as you can see here. And finally, helminths, or what we call as worms. So these are the six major groups of microorganisms, viruses, fungi, algae, protozoa, bacteria, and helminths. And we'll be, talk we'll be talking about these different groups individually more deeply in the next coming chapters. And here are other examples and pictures of the six types of microbes or microorganisms. Now, there are two major themes in the study of microbiology, and this will be helpful in uh, organizing our thoughts about micro microbiology. The first of which is understanding the nature and functioning of the microbial world. So very important na maintindihan natin kung paano ba nagpa-function, paano ba ang, ano ba ang kalikasan o nature nitong microbial world. Because knowing so, we'll be able, will be helpful for us especially to protect ourselves against invading microorganisms or disease causing microorganisms. Kaya kung alam natin kung paano nagpa-function yung iba't ibang bahagi, how the cell work works, how the cell membrane works, how do they produce their proteins, how do they multiply, how do they divide. So this will be very this inf this different information will be very helpful in order for us to combat these microorganisms and uh, not allow them to proliferate in our body. The second major theme of microbiology, as you can see here, is applying our understanding of the microbial world for the benefit of humankind and the planet Earth. So in this, uh, sa part na ito, ay kung paano ba natin maintindihan, uh, kung anaintindihan natin ng function, ng bacteria, and other useful information, then we can use these microorganisms, apply these microorganisms to help us in a beneficial way. So tulad ng fermentation that can help to produce food o kaya naman ay other processes that can help in the in bioremediation kung paano yung microorganisms ay, ay um, nililinis yung ating environment from pollution. So these are applying such understanding of the microbial world so it becomes beneficial for us especially as we continue to take note na napakaraming mga resources ang ginagamit, nakapopollute ang ating environment. So this can be very, very helpful. Now, after looking at the themes of microbiology, let us now look at the importance of microbiology. Why do we need to study this? Now, one of the importance of microbiology is for the field of medicine. Now, as you, as we look at the impact of infectious diseases, where we look at the average lifespan. During the Bronze Age, the average lifespan of a person is 26 years old. During medieval Europe, 400 to 15,000 AD, the average lifespan is 30 years old. In the early 20th century, 50 to 64 years old will be the average, and now the world average is 71 years, at least for the U.S., or at least for the U.S. 78.7. Now the question is why? And the reason for this is because of the development of good hygiene, the development of antibiotics, which means we were, because of the, our knowledge and ability to combat microorganisms, our lifespan has actually extended because of that. In this table, we will see here the years by which the diseases were discovered, the, the name of the diseases and the causative agent, and also this, this the discoverer. Now, we don't have time to discuss all of this, but just suffice for you to know that there are several microorganisms that are 
pathogenic to human beings and this um, napakalaki ng impact ng mga microorganisms na ito, especially in terms of medical bills, in terms of expenses for not only for the family but also for the country. So maraming mga, maraming mga resources ang nauubos dahil lamang sa mga microorganisms na ito. So some of the diseases, most of this, some of these are, may, may already be very familiar with you. So here is anthrax, gonorrhea, typhoid fever, malaria, very familiar malaria, tuberculosis, one of the uh, big problems here in the Philippines, cholera, and this disease wiped out a lot of people during the uh, World War One, World War II, and this is a waterborne disease, diphtheria, tetanus, very, very familiar as well, uh, especially found in dirty things that may puncture your skin or even uh, when you are bitten by animals, pneumonia, gangrene, plague, the plague which wiped out more than a third, if I'm not mistaken, a third of the European population during the Middle Ages and several other diseases. So just for you, suffice for you to know that microorganisms have a great impact on humans in terms of the, their medical impact on us. So you can see here two figures. In the 1900s, you will be noticing that influenza would be the top disease that caused death for 1,000 population, followed by tuberculosis, gastroenteritis, heart disease, stroke, kidney accident, cancer, infant disease, and diphtheria. But today, the list is quite different. The top most killer in the world today is heart disease when in fact in 1900s it's only the fourth cancer is next stroke is neck pulmonary diseases so what you would be noticing is that those that are in the the red colored are actually infectious diseases caused by microorganisms in the 1900 prior to the discovery of penicillin uh, production of production of antibiotics and other techniques that would lessen infection. Most people died because of these microorganisms, but today because of the advances in medicine, uh, the influenza pneumonia, kidney disease, and all of these infectious diseases caused by microorganisms are not as deadly or does not affect the population as much as they affected then. So it's a good thing that right now, uh, infectious diseases are not much of a problem. We have a lot of medicine to take care of this, but of course the problem would be the uh, non-infectious diseases. So the question is, what is the simple most important thing that you can do to prevent the spread of infection or infectious diseases? The answer to that is, as you can see in the picture, is to simply wash your hands with soap and water. By that, it reduces or kills a lot of microorganisms so that when you eat your food or when you touch your face or any other, uh, or your mouth, these microorganisms will not be able to go into our system and thereby cause diseases. Another importance of microbiology in addition to medicine would be food and drink production. We are already familiar with this. We mentioned about beer production and cheese production, uh, soy sauce production. These are all produced by the action of microorganisms. Microbiology is also very important for fundamental research. The reason that we are knowledgeable today about uh, DNA, RNA, transcription, translation, replication, the central dogma is because most of the initial researches and even researchers up to now are related with the microorganism using bacteria and other such microorganisms. In agriculture, micro, uh, microbiology is very important as well because our knowledge of microorganisms can help us to produce more food or to take care of the animals better in the agricultural sector. Uh, for example, Microorganisms can be helpful in increasing soil fertility or, uh, for example, in leguminous 
plants in the root nodules, the rhizobian species are found there, which helps with nitrogen fixation. So which later helps in more uh, increased production as well. So this is very helpful in agriculture. Now, microbiology is also very important or helpful in the pharmaceutical industry. Now, of course, we already know the pharmaceutical industry produces medicine. So yung study the microbiology can help in producing more effective kinds of medicine against uh, infectious diseases. So ang pag-aaral tungkol sa cell wall, the weaknesses of the cell wall can help produce better kinds of medicine uh, that can target the cell wall to kill the bacteria. Or there have been some studies about you know, trying to know about the different mechanisms in the protein production, in the translation, in the inside of the cell by the, by, by the ribosome. So if if uh, medicines can target these uh, mechanisms, then the cells or the, the pathogenic cells will not be able to divide and grow. So they will be, they can be killed inside the body. So this is the study of microbiology is very helpful in the pharmaceutical industry as well. Now in, in uh, other human uses of microorganisms, biotechnology, we're in this uh, production of food, drugs, and vaccines using living organisms. We mentioned uh, we mentioned a while ago about insulin being produced using genetically in, in genetically engineered microbes. Vaccines are produced from the uh, are are produced from the parts of viruses to to help the immune system recognize these viruses to mount up the Im uh, immune response against such uh, pathogenic microorganisms. Genetic engineering is another very important area. Genetic engineering is manipulating the genes of organisms to make new products. If you, you are familiar as well, probably about Bt corn, where the where Bacillus thuringiensis gene or as gene from that bacteria has been inserted into the genome of corn thereby producing corn that can produce pesticide-like substances just like Bacillus thuringiensis, which, which protects uh, the corn from insects. In addition to that's bioremediation, where in use, uh, the, this is where there is the use of living organisms to remedy an environmental problem. So just like the use of microorganisms to eat oil spills, so this is one way of what we, 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 we can help in taking care or improving the environment in spite of the pollution that is happening. So we already mentioned about the impact of microorganisms in human health and nutrition. We also mentioned about the impact of microorganisms to humans through agriculture, as we mentioned a while ago. As a picture here, this is what we were talking about, the nodules in leguminous plants, where in this nodule would be containing the rhizobium, which helps in fixing, as you can see here, NH, N2 becomes NH3, becomes NO3. So this is fixing nitrogen and also fixing sulfur, that's a, a cycle. So these are very helpful in agriculture. And also microorganisms in food production, other impact on humans. So glucose through the processes inside of the microorganism uh, can produce lactic acid which produces and, and which produces uh, this product ethanol to produce the wine acetic acid to produce what we use for pickles uh, the vinegar and propionic acid and acetic acid plus carbon dioxide to produce the cheese so these are important work by microorganisms production of food and we haven't yet discussed this. So another impact of microorganism will be in energy production. So the biomass is converted, the glucose converted through fermentation to produce ethanol. I mentioned methane a while ago, but in this case, ethanol is being produced, which will be used for energy production. So this ends the, this part of the video. And in the next part of the video, we'll be talking about what our ancestors know about microbes, about microbiology.